What's going on everyone? Welcome back, Patrick here. And moving on to the next video, what we gotta do is we gotta take this function here, we have to graph it, and then we have to find this uh, overall limit. So the function we're working with is x plus the absolute value of 2x minus four. So let's actually write that over here again. And like the previous one-sided limit examples, whenever we're dealing with an absolute value, within a function, let's change that to a piecewise function so we can get rid of this absolute value. And so this, uh, let's forget about this x plus, this 2x minus four, basically this is going to equal 2x minus four, but that's only gonna happen when that 2x minus four is, um, is greater than zero. And let's actually put greater than or equal to zero. I know before in the previous examples, we've been putting just greater than zero. I'm gonna explain why for this specific function, we could put greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so it's just gonna stay that if that is positive or greater than or equal to zero. Because if it's positive, then absolute value just takes anything negative, turns it into a positive. But if it's already positive, we don't have to do any transformations. Now, if this 2x minus four, if this expression is gonna be negative, it's gonna be less than zero, then what we're gonna to have to do is we're gonna to have to take that expression 2x minus four, which is gonna be negative, and multiply it by a negative one in order to turn it positive. Okay, so using that there, we can just add the x to both of those expressions. So we'll have x plus 2x minus four, when 2x minus four is greater than or equal to zero. And uh, if 2x minus four is less than zero, if it's negative, then we'll have x minus 2x minus four. You gotta make sure you put that expression in brackets. So we're gonna be minusing that entire expression. Now, in the previous examples, uh, I wasn't putting this greater than or equal to, I was just putting greater than. And that's because in the previous examples, we were dealing with a rational function. And so let's say that instead we had two, the absolute value two x minus four over two x minus four. Well, notice that two x minus four in this case cannot equal zero. And if we isolate for x, it means x cannot equal two because then the denominator is going to be zero. And so at that x value of two, for this function here, there's actually going to be a hole. But notice that for this function, there's no denominator. So we can actually take that x value of two and plug it in here. This two x minus four can be zero. And we just end up with this x, right? Nothing's going to be undefined. So there's not going to be any vertical asymptotes to worry about or any holes like here. So that's why you can put this greater than or equal to zero there. Um, yeah, so from here, let's just simplify everything. So if we simplify this, we would end up having three X minus four. And when we isolate for this X, that's basically gonna happen when X is greater than or equal to two. And over here, if we distribute this negative inside the bracket, we would end up with negative X plus four. And that's gonna happen when x is less than two. Okay, so this function is equal to this piecewise function. And now, pretty simple to, uh, to graph it, we can, um, we can do a rough sketch. Let's actually make a quick table of values, why not? So, um, Let's make a table of values for negative x plus four, and then a table of values for three x minus four. And this function is when x is less than two, but let's still put that x value at two. That's just gonna be a hole there, right? It's not gonna be defined there, but let's put it anyway, just to see what's happening, and then how it's gonna relate to this x value at two. And then we could pick x values that are less than two. So let's put one, zero, and negative one. Let's just use three. 
So if we plug in 2 here, we'll have negative 2 plus 4, which is uh, positive 2. Then we'll have um, negative 1 plus 4, which would be uh, positive 3. Then we'll have 4. Then we'll have 5. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1 plus 4 gives us 5. And then here, this 3x minus 4, that's the function when x is greater than or equal to 2. So let's put 2 again, and then let's pick x values that are greater than 2. So 3, 4, 5. Uh, so here we'll have 2 times 3 minus 4 is 2. Then we'll have um, 5. We'll have 8. And then uh, 11. Like that. And so now, all we have to do is, uh, is graph this. So we've got negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then uh, let's forget about this point. Let's not go up to 11. Let's just go up to 8. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, like that. So we got negative 1 and 5, which would be up here. 0 and 4, we got 1 and 3, and then we got 2 and 2, and then over here that's a whole, remember? It's not defined there. But notice that this function has that same coordinate, 2 and 2, and it is defined there at that x value of 2. So this actually ends up being just a solid dot because of this point right here. It's actually defined at that x value of 2. And then we'll have 3 and 5, which would be up here. This line, 3x minus 4, is going to be uh, more slanted than this line, because this line has a slope of negative 1. This line has a slope of positive 3. So we'll have 3 and, uh, three and 5, and then we'll have 4 and uh, 8, which is going to be up here. And then 5 and 11, which would be up there. So if we draw this, basically got this here. That's how this function is going to look. If you take this, plug it into decimals, you should end up getting something like that, right? Same thing as this piecewise function. Remember this and this are the exact same thing. And now what we can do is we can solve this limit. And hopefully you could tell that the, uh, the limit exists and it's equal to that uh, y value of two because the limit as x approaches 2 from the negative side of this function, what's it equal to? If we look at the graph, it's approaching that y value of 2 right there. So that, and then the limit as x approaches 2 from the positive side of this function, that is equaling, that's approaching that y value of 2 as well right here. And so since it's approaching that same y value from both sides, it basically means that this overall limit is equal to 2. Right? So this function, that's the graph, that is the limit.